<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, venting enthusiasts the world over, and apparently production managers and planning coordinators and jack of all trades, welcome to the Mechanical Room Extras. We have Anthony Almey here, who has made his triumphant return to Central <laughs> Therm after a little sabbatical there. Anthony, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Uh, so I ran out a few things. You used to be the warehouse manager like a few months back. Then you took a little time off and you worked at Ball Manufacturing, is that yes. called? Yep, yep. But you're back now yep. and you've already kind of shifted your roles, right? So you came uh, back as what and what are you doing now? So I came back as a production supervisor on the B-Shift and now I've added into that the planning or part of the planning role of doing the batching for uh, pick tickets for the warehouse again. So what is batching exactly? So basically we take the sales orders when they come in and we turn them into a pick ticket by adding the, or allocating the parts to the order to make it a pickable order to ship out to the customer. So when you say batching, it's literally putting things into the batches, this many elbows, that many yeah. bends, that sort of thing. Correct. And then they go to individual orders Correct. as they ship out the door. Yep, and then it tells us what work orders we gotta make between production and uh, cartoning okay. and whatnot, so that way we can get the order complete and get it shipped out. So warehouse management compared to planning and things like that, they're two totally different things. Two Cle totally ball games. <laughs> Clearly, you know, so you were here before our like big, big growth we got and now because we need to bring you back as part of the growth. Um, and now you're doing different stuff. Um, hopefully you prefer what you're doing now. Uh, I think the prior stuff was more in my wheelhouse, but okay. I feel like this is a definite learning um, and uh, opportunity, yeah, opportunity, you know? Uh, and you never want to shy away from a challenge or the work. So, you know, correct. excellent. So, and I think you're kind of well suited for this because of the way that we operated when we were a bit smaller. There was a Correct. lot more overlap. Yes. So you fundamentally yes. understood what you're doing now kind of intuitively based on the old job. Right, right. So I mean, I knew the parts, I knew the processes, but I didn't actually know like the detail of the processes, I guess you could say. So is that the biggest challenge you're facing right now is getting in the weeds on that? Side? Yeah, yeah. Like learning to set up the cells, to make parts, learning um, what guys are stronger at what parts, where the warehouse is kind of, we're gonna pick orders. So that's fascinating. So do you, I, I didn't really realize that. Are you, you're able to, in the planning, understand that person X is better at at this particular task and sort of steer the planning towards their strengths? Um, in a way, so we have parts that have to get made um, and everybody has a different skill level um, on the floor. So some people are level one, level two, level threes. So obviously the level three ones, we try to have those guys do the harder parts and try to assist. So what's a harder part exactly? So something that needs to be resized, welded back together. Um, we have to cut it from a larger pipe, cut out a section of it, mirror weld it, put it back together, and then add other components to it to make okay. it a resized so, part. So more complicated parts yes. that require several processes that's correct. It. Um, he's, okay, so I'm just the lonely marketing guy. I don't really know too much about how this stuff comes together. <laughs> I, I only know how, how to sell it, right? So I'm curious about that. Are, is there an individual part that that in, that one person may take through from and do all of the processes on that individual part, or um, uh, or does they pass it off at certain point, or both? Well, there's a little bit of both. So some of our parts get pulled over. They go to the CNC desk first. CNC then cuts the discs or feeders or cuts the pipes okay. and then sends it back and then the welders will weld it. Other parts come over and a welder can just take it and okay, so it, it do it themselves. It varies based on what yes. the component is. Right. You know, what what component is the, the biggest headache for you? For me? Yeah. Uh, it's some of the some of the random parts that we don't make too often. Okay, so one So stuff. one that kind of pops out was last week, we had to do a uh, part, uh, ISAAN 0404. Okay, so ISAAN 0404, so in a, in a single system. wall, appliance adapter, adapter and Nuritz. Is that what it was for yes. Nuritz? Okay, that's a particular yes. one-off adapter for a particular so water heater. I've seen them in the warehouse when we've picked them for orders a couple times here and there, but never actually saw the part. Okay. Um, and Adam being one of our top guys, Guys, uh, he had to do them by himself, uh, basically, because <laughs> okay, so it was he, it was a pretty difficult part. Interesting. Okay, and that's a low volume part yes. that only comes through every year and there compared to I don't know other parts that we're making hundreds and hundreds every week, basically. Uh, the low pro wall terms, we do 250 
pretty much every other week. Okay, so, so. that's a, 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 high, a high runner. Yes, yes. Interesting. Okay, so what has been the biggest? Um, oh, oh, so you said the challenge was learning some of the in the weeds elements, so, yeah. and it was pretty natural for you to, to sw- slide in there based on how we operated in the past. So Correct. it was a you know you were uniquely qualified to to take over some of that some of that duty. What's um. What's a plan for the future that you'd like to employ that will maybe streamline the process and the planning a little bit better? Or, or what's, a, what's a project that's sort of longer term to improve the efficiency on the floor? So being back into doing the kind of planning role, it kind of gives me a better opportunity to kind of look. And I'm not the planner, but I'm involved in the planning. Um, but being involved in that again kind of gives me a better look at the floor as to what parts need to get made. And we have a, a list of parts on the board out there, and we being able to put them into a priority and get them shipped is is the biggest challenge we have right now. So we always knew what parts needed to get made for what day, but trying to remember, okay, these parts have to go on a pallet, they gotta get made first, these parts are gonna have to go into another kit, and then that kit has to go on a pallet, so we gotta get those made. So just prioritizing and, and planning to try to help get orders out the door more efficiently. So I, I appreciate you articulating that because I don't think people necessarily realize how much of a, of a ballet, and how many moving pieces there are to literally go from granulate to raw material and then fine tuned with potentially something that might have several processes. Yes. You're putting a drain on it, you're putting a socket on it, and it's going a gasket, and then of course a label on its way towards the box, on the way towards on a pallet, on its yes. way towards palletized, on its way towards rated and ship. <laughs> so I guess I do sort of understand a little yeah. bit of the process here. So yeah. um, um, but yes, so that you're now helping to streamline up basically that whole process now. Yes. Yep. Excellent. So um, Chris Chris is uh good that's Chris Gerard planning. And then JJ's doing a lot of the work orders, and then I'm doing the, the pick tickets, and we're all the three of us are working together to try to get that streamlined to where we're getting parts made on time. How much cross training between all three of you? Let's say it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so each of you kind of pitch in with each so, other a little bit. Then. Like uh, as you said before, um, with the way we ran things before, there was a lot of being a smaller group. There was a lot of interaction on all different part departments. Sure. So I have a pretty good knowledge of each area so chris has a pretty good knowledge on the computer and jj has a very good knowledge on the production side so my my knowledge on the warehouse side and the little bit in between definitely helps you're complimenting each one of each us other. yes yep. excellent wonderful yes. cool man well um what do you like to do in your spare time i know it's a quick transition right there but yeah. part of this whole segment is what you're doing here what we're working on in terms of you know making the manufacturing or the finance department or marketing whatever run smoothly because that is our you know our day-to-day but yep. of course you punch out at i guess you've been mixing and matching shifts so i was gonna say at five but it's not really <laughs> yeah. it's like 11 or 11 30 at night's my normal uh, punch out time so, so then what does a, what does a b shift supervisor do uh when you leave here and it is now midnight uh, usually I go home, take a shower, get something to eat, and go to sleep. <laughs> but, right. uh, in the mornings, we've been redoing our, our home, trying to add a new bathroom in, God. so doing that. And then uh, my daughter convinced me to volunteer at a rabbit rescue with her, so I've been doing that with her. Which one? Ariana. No, no, not which daughter. Oh, which, oh. which, which rescue? So there's a place in Willow Mall called Hop, Hop on, on Home. home. For real? Yep. You're volunteering there? Every Saturday. Every my, other Saturday. From Have you not seen my wife there? She, vol- she volunteers at the Hop on Hope as well. Did not see her. Oh, I'm, my God. We'll have to so make sure that you... last Saturday was our first time. She was there last Saturday. Uh, we oh, were no, there. she was there on Sunday. Yeah. We were there from 9 to 11 on Saturday. And then on Sunday, my daughter worked from 12 to 5. Okay. Interesting. But I wasn't with her on Sunday, so... So we'll have to. Uh, I'll have to let Gabrielle know, yes. of course, that you're uh, involved in that as well. That's funny. So she does small the, world. She she does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She goes up there and she volunteers in Wilton. Yeah. And also she's been doing fostering and whatnot as well. She takes them to stay at my house, our house, for a little while because the uh, the veterinarian is like right up the road in okay. Greenbush. So rather than go back and forth to Wilton, they stay at my house. Gotcha. They, they get fixed. They come back and Gabrielle does like the post op. Yeah, yeah. And whatnot. So that's what a, that is a small world up there. Yeah. How are you enjoying it? It was a, it was a big uh, 
for me, it was awesome um, yeah. to watch my daughter really get excited about something to really, and she loves animals. She wants to be a vet when she gets older. So watching her jump right in, um, the lady that runs it, her name's Shelby, and she approached my daughter on Sunday and was like, for being your second day here, like I'm very impressed. So I thought that was pretty awesome when I went to pick her up, you know, she was telling me how impressed she was. And so it was really cool to see my daughter get involved with something that she really cares and is passionate about. And there's a lot, as, as you know, there are lots of rabbits and they need a lot of care. And uh, I mean, that place is doing, doing really good stuff. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, it's nice to see. I'm glad that you're doing that, man. That's very, yeah. that's very nice. It is, a, it is a good thing. And those animals are often um, neglected and whatnot. So they need a little bit of love. Yeah. And that, you're a warm and cuddly guy to yeah, do absolutely. that. So that's amazing, man. I yeah. appreciate that. And I'm sure my wife will, um, of course, tell her like immediately when we stop recording here. Absolutely. That you're doing that <laughs> and, to, and to look for you. I think she's scheduled this Saturday or this Sunday to be up there as well. Mm -hmm. So Ariana, well, the next shift that I'll be with her is on the third. But, uh, but she might go this weekend with either Ashley or Ashley's mom. So Fantastic. Excellent, man. We'll keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Thanks for stopping by the mechanical room. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.